the Uplinks provisioning system for Cisco Unified Communications. System Demonstration Demonstration Overview This online demonstration will step through the life cycle of a user within a Cisco Unified Communications and Microsoft Active Directory environment. It will demonstrate how easily the provisioning interface is used to commission UC moves, adds changes and deletions. It will also demonstrate how the Uplinks provisioning system can save both time and money to an organisation by ensuring MACDs are handled in a consistent manner through defined business rules enforced by the provisioning system engine, allowing MACDs to be commissioned by less skilled staff, and completing MACDs in a fraction of the time as phone administrators no longer have to log into each Cisco UC server, Information can be pre-populated from defined sources such as Active Directory, while all data is validated in real time. All these features leads to MACDs being processed correctly, first time, every time. The demonstration environment consists of an Uplinks provisioning system server with the AD CUCM change tracker feature enabled, an Active Directory and Microsoft Exchange server, a Cisco Unified Communications Manager server with the AD Sync feature enabled, a Cisco Unity Connection server with CUCM Sync enabled, and a Cisco Unified Presence server with CUCM Sync enabled. The Demonstration Workflow This demonstration workflow consists of creating a new AD user via the MS Exchange Management Console. This creates a new mailbox in Exchange for the test user and also creates a new Active Directory user. The CUCM Directory Sync process is then triggered to query AD for new users. The AD Sync process then finds the new AD user and in turn creates a new unconfigured user in CUCM. The change tracker process on the provisioning system is then triggered to query AD and CUCM for new or updated users. The provisioning system then detects the new user and alerts the phone administrator via email. The phone administrator then logs into the provisioning system and quickly commissions the new user and associated objects. Provisioning changes are then pushed to each of the relevant Cisco UC servers in the correct sequence. The results of the commissioning activities are displayed in the job status window and jobs typically complete in between 10 and 30 seconds. The demonstration. Step 1. A new AD user is created by the MS Exchange Management Console. From within the MS Exchange Management Console, we create a new mailbox. From here we create a demonstration subject called Tom Test. We define Tom Test's user login name and also password. On creation of the new mailbox, a new AD user for Tom Test is also created. We confirm a new user object in AD for TomTest has been created by doing a search in AD for TomTest. Here we confirm the TomTest AD object with no telephone number defined. Step 2 has us performing a forced CUCM directory sync with Active Directory. We log into the CUCM server with administrative rights. We then go to the LDAP directory section under the System Main Menu option. 
We then select our Active Directory domain controller and select the option to perform a full sync now. After performing the full AD sync, we now check the CUCM user database to see that Tom test has been created. As we can see, the Tom test CUCM user object has been created. And as expected, the user Tom test is not associated with any CUCM objects. Step 3 has us performing a forced AD CUCM sync with the provisioning system via the change tracker. We log into the provisioning system with administrative rights and from the provisioning system section on the left hand side we select the change tracker service. This confirms that the change tracker service is configured and running. We now log into the OWA client as an IP telephony administrator to confirm that no new MACD jobs have been generated by the provisioning system. Back at the change tracker service screen, we press the run now button to force the change tracker process to run. The change tracker process is now running to find new and updated users in Active Directory. Once completed, we go back to the OWA client and find that a new MACD has been created by the provisioning system for Tom Test. Pressing the provisioning system link in the email, the phone administrator is taken to the provisioning system login screen. Once logged in, the phone administrator looks for the MACD by selecting a region and a site. All current MACDs for the selected site are shown at the bottom of the window. Step 4. The phone administrator selects the MACD job for commissioning. Once the job is selected, the phone administrator uses their right mouse button to select the push to commissioning option. They then select a job template. This then pushes the Active Directory information onto the main provisioning screens and locks the MACD job. As can be seen, a lot of the provisioning fields are already pre-populated by the provisioning system. Here we see an example of how the provisioning system validates all data prior to provisioning. We now select a free extension for Tom Test from the site number range. Free extensions are retrieved from the core manager in real time. Any text fields that use the extension number are automatically updated. All we have left to do now is to add a description to the department field for the voicemail profile and submit the job. The job takes less than 20 seconds to complete successfully. Step 5 has the phone administrator alert the end user of completion of their MACD job. The email create button generates a job completion email using predefined email templates. Email templates are defined on the provisioning system on a per site basis. Here we are validating via OWA that Tom Test has received an email indicating that his telephony MACD has been processed. At 
Step 6. We are validating user configuration details with the Uplinks Remote Phone Control Tool. By using the Remote Phone Control Tool, we log into a test IP phone to validate Tom Test's user profile. We then use extension mobility to log into the phone as Tom Test. To validate Tom Test's line extension has been configured correctly, we place a test phone call to internal extension 6600. Once we've confirmed the user device profile has been configured correctly, we log out of the phone. Step 7 has us validating the commissioning job for Tom Test on the CCM server. We log into the CUCM server as administrator and then go to the management and user configuration screen and search for Tom Test. Here we can see that the provisioning system has configured the appropriate objects for the user Tom Test. We then confirm that the user device profile for Tom Test has also been set up correctly. Step 8 demonstrates how easy it is to delete a user and all associated objects. To delete a user and all associated objects, a phone administrator needs to select a region and a site and then select the appropriate deletion template. The phone administrator then searches for the end user, in this case Tom Test. The provisioning system then displays all the objects configured for that particular user on the CUCM server for validation. Once the phone administrator has validated this is the correct user for deletion, they enter a reference and then press the Submit Job button to action the deletion. We can see by the job status page that all objects associated with Tom Test have been deleted. The user Tom Test on the CUCM, however, has not been deleted due to the CUCM being configured in AD Sync mode. The phone administrator can then send an email to relevant staff indicating that the user Tom Test has been removed from the Cisco UC environment. This ends the online demonstration of the Uplinks provisioning system. For more information on Uplink software products, please visit www.uplinks.com.